All right, well, praise the Lord Jesus who has provided everything we need for our venison red pepper chili today. And it's starting to cool off in September. We got football on the TV. We're going to have venison red pepper chili in the pot. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So the main thing you need is the three pounds of ground venison. Uh, you can cut the recipe in half if you need to, if you're not feeding so many people. We've got the three pounds of ground venison. We got a little olive oil in here and we're gonna start browning uh, the ground venison. And you don't need to sear it or anything like that. It's just browning it. There is a redeemer, Jesus, God's own son, precious lamb of God, Messiah, oh, all right, as our venison starts to brown, we'll go over uh, our rest of our ingredients here. Uh, we've got one whole red pepper finely diced. Uh, we've got two cloves of garlic that have been diced. We've got two whole red jalapeno peppers or the equivalent amount of slices that were preserved in vinegar and they've been diced. And then we've got one stalk of uh, celery that's been diced. We have uh, 15 ounces of beans. Now the beans are optional. If we would have had red kidney beans, I probably would have used those. That's what my wife prefers, but we had the black ones, so we'll go with those today. And we've got uh, two cans of tomatoes, diced tomatoes, 28 ounces each. A third cup of uh, balsamic vinegar. And if you don't happen to have the balsamic vinegar, you can use a third cup of wine vinegar. Uh, but I'd add a tablespoon of sugar if you're going to use wine or apple cider vinegar. And then we're going to end up adding one teaspoon, I'm sorry, one tablespoon of Creole seasoning, a little black pepper, and uh, one half cup of uh, chili powder. So it's a pretty healthy serving of chili powder. And if you want to actually see the written recipe, all right, so we'll just uh, continue browning the meat. And as there's some time gaps as the meat browns, I will go ahead and prep some of the other stuff. Okay, so we often add the spices while the meat's browning, but we don't add the other ingredients uh, until the meat is finished browning. Now the black beans, uh, and even if we use kidney beans, uh, we do strain them and rinse them. The tomatoes, however, are not strained or rinsed. They just get added. And the veggies. Alright, so now from here there are two possible paths forward. One uh, is to turn the heat down. We brown the meat on medium-high heat. If we were in a hurry for dinner, we turn the heat down to medium and we'd stir every five or 10 minutes for about an hour. But, you know, we thought in advance and I like it a little better, give it more time for the, uh, the flavors to meld. Uh, and this, this can either be done on the stove, you turn it all the way down to simmer, or you can do it on the slow cooker and just let it cook all afternoon, right? Dinner time is gonna be about six o'clock. So really I'll swing by and I'll just stir this about every hour uh, before dinner. And then we'll have an awesome big pot of chili. Uh, we'll serve it with some 
uh, some shredded cheese, maybe some sour cream, maybe some chips or crackers, whatever we're in the mood for tonight. Uh, we'll be back in probably uh, three and a half hours for the taste test. All right, here we are a few hours later. The chili is finished and I'm excited. It's fall, it's cool outside, and we got venison chili. So, you know, our favorite garnishes are a little cilantro, some avocado, some cheese, some crackers. You know, if you prefer onions, whatever you, whatever you like, you know, go for it. Uh, so I'm really pleased that uh, with what we have today, venison chili. All right, my bride, we're ready for the taste test. Mm. That's the taste I know and love. That's good. If the camera was on my face, you'd see what redneck ecstasy looks like. I recommend cilantro highly. Thank you, Jesus. Take another look in the good, good book. Don't let it pass you by. Let the Holy Spirit 